Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone. The time has finally come. Fort Park have officially submitted planning application to build the UK's tallest roller coaster. And in today's video, I am going to be explaining and digging through the 50 documents that make up this application. I've done a ton of research and I'm gonna tell you guys everything you need to know about this groundbreaking new roller coaster. But I can't even explain how exciting it is to see this official planning application go in. We've been waiting 10 years now at Fort Park for a new roller coaster to get built and it is finally happening. Leave a thumbs up on this video if you are as excited for Project Exodus as I am. Now the way this video is going to work, essentially I've done all of this research and compiled screenshots and descriptions for this big planning application over on my Twitter. But essentially today, I'm gonna to be going through all of these screenshots and explaining them to you all in a little bit more detail because I made a long, long thread over there and I completely understand that some people might just not have the time to go through and read all of that. So yeah, sit back, relax, and I will talk you through everything you need to know about this ride. And we're going to start off with this initial page on the document, um, which just kind of states all of the companies or people or organizations that Fort Park have um, consulted or got um, work from in order to put this whole application together. Right, let's get into the actual application now. So one of the first things to discuss is the fact that Fort Park actually kind of outlined the response that they got from all of their consultations, be that the in-person ones, the online video ones, as well as the consultation website. In fact, we actually get an awesome stat which states that the consultation website was visited 23,839 times by over 15,000 individuals since its launch. And uh, 1,600 of these were from international individuals. So yeah, this coaster is getting international recognition. I mean, I've seen that myself. I've had loads of messages um, from people from over in the States and in Europe and stuff uh, saying how excited they are for Project Exodus. It's so, so cool to finally, finally have the spotlight on Fort Park. But yeah, one of the most interesting um, stats that was revealed from this consultation period was Fort Park Pal uh, question asking if people support Merlin's ambition to invest at the Fort Park Resort so that they can continue to bring in um, visitors. And as you can see from this pie chart, 97% of the people are said yes, they are absolutely for new investment at Fort Park, which is really exciting and just shows the immense amount of support for Fort Park when it comes to building a new attraction. Now Fort Park are being really, really open about this entire process and in this application, they actually, as I said, kind of respond to a lot of the queries and questions and concerns that were raised in these consultations. And one of the main questions it seems that was asked was about the design of the roller coaster itself. And as you can see from this screenshot, it actually states that the manufacturer is not a planning matter. So essentially the architects that are working on this application don't feel it's necessary to actually say what roller coaster they're planning on building. They're just kind of giving all of the stats, like the height and everything like that. And instead they say that this will be identified via the resort website in due course, as it is acknowledged that this is a matter of interest for roller coaster enthusiasts. I love that. It seems like they are literally just fed up of all of the enthusiasts, like what's the manufacturer? Who's gonna be building this thing? Um, but yeah, it seems like they are not fussed about telling the council what kind of ride it is, because to be honest, I don't think the council will care. I don't think the council will even know um, about these manufacturers. So yeah, it seems like the manufacturer will be revealed by the park eventually, and it will be used as some kind of marketing um, for the ride. Like as they say, people are very excited to find out what it is. So I'm sure the park will try and hype it up and make a big deal out of the reveal. Although saying that, Keep watching the video and I'm pretty sure we can make a few strong predictions as to what the manufacturer will be. 
Now another response to some of the consultations, questions and stuff that I found particularly funny was this one about the Heathrow flight path. Because for so many years now, people have been chatting online saying, oh, Fort Park are not able to build higher than stealth. Stealth is the ceiling of Fort Park. Heathrow have told the park that they're not allowed to build any taller because it will then be unsafe for pilots and stuff as they fly into one of the biggest airports in the UK. And I absolutely love how in this document they literally say they've uh, worked with the Civil Aviation Authority to basically figure out any risks that might come from building this coaster taller than stealth and clearly by the fact that they're still applying for this planning permission there were no issues at all. So yeah, I just love that that's finally shut all of those rumors down. And the next part of this just states about how Fort Park are considering looking at the Monk's Walk fencing um, and maybe working on improving that um, because they clearly know that it's going to be popular with people trying to spot the construction for this massive new coaster. Now next up we have quite a sad image unfortunately. This is what I refer to as the demolition map. Everything that you see in red on this image is stuff that's due to be taken out of the area and essentially demolished or in some cases repurposed. So yeah, we've got Logger's Leap, the entirety of that ride, um, Rocky Express, the Curly Fry Unit, <laughs> Lumber Jump, Timber Tug, the old uh, Candler Creek Railway train station, and interestingly, the Creek Freak Massacre building as well. Now there isn't currently a time scale attached to this uh, demolition map. So although Creek will be going for the construction of this new coaster if it gets approved. We don't know when. So we're still waiting to see if Creek Freak Massacre will be able to open for this year's Fright Nights event. My fingers are crossed that hopefully um, they will be able to open it. And uh, later on in this application, we do get a better idea as to construction timescales. So I'll discuss that very shortly. Now next up, we have one of my favorite screenshots from the entire application as this actually shows us one of the original concepts for this brand new roller coaster. And it is very different to what we currently have with Project Exodus's plans. As you can see, the layout of this ride is in purple on this diagram. And it seems like a lot more of a B&M hyper style layout. It has more of an out and back style traditional hyper coaster layout. Nothing compared to what we currently have with Exodus. And yeah, it's just so interesting to see what could have been. And if we read the description to the side of this, it actually explains why these plans um, had to be changed. But essentially the reasons that it was then further developed was because A, it interfered with too many food and beverage units. So as you can see, they would have had to have removed the current Burger King um, food unit from Old Town. And they also stated that the ride overall just wasted a bit too much space. So it is, as you can see, sprawled over a massive area. It would have had the removal of Slammer, as well as, as I said, the Burger King unit, and of course, Logger's Leap with all of that. Another issue with it was they crossed the canyon area of Platform 15, a naturally very beautiful part of the park that unfortunately we rarely get to see unless you're doing the uh, Fright Nights Maze Platform 15. So yeah, they claimed that they wanted to keep this as a bit of a buffer for North and visual impacts from outside of the park. So obviously Project Exodus doesn't go as far as this, which means it's quite hidden from all of the trees. But uh, if they were to have built this B&M style layout, then you probably would have heard it and seen it a lot more from outside of the park. But yeah, I think it's just so interesting to see what could have been and hopefully um, as the years go on, we'll kind of see even more of these plans in more detail. But eventually this coaster was worked on by the designers and everything to be what we know today as Project Exodus. And as you can see, we've got this awesome 3D rendering of it. I love this kind of thing. I'm such a geek when it comes to like 3D models and kind of CAD design and stuff. So this is very cool for me. And as you can see, we've got even more awesome rendering for Project Exodus. It's just such a beast, isn't it? And Fort Park actually point out here that the ride will have a number of high points with its tallest obviously being 72 meters high, making it, of course, the tallest ride in the UK. Its second highest point will be 50 meters, then 48 meters, and then 44 meters. Now, the interesting part about this is that obviously from the plans that we've seen, it seems like at least one of these high points will be an inversion, which will very much set this ride to have one of the tallest roller coaster inversions, one of the tallest points in which you go upside down basically, in the world. In fact, it very well could have the tallest inversion 
in all of Europe, which is an insane title for Fort Park to hold. And again, just as a sense of scale, as you can see from this diagram, literally everything that you can see in purple on this Project Exodus diagram is over 25 meters. And Tidal Wave, also at Fort Park, is just below 25 meters. So essentially everything in purple here is taller than Tidal Wave. Just think how tall that is. And it really puts this ride into perspective as to just how massive it's gonna be. And then obviously we've got this image here, which I actually made. So just to confirm, this isn't necessarily exactly perfect height accurate. If anything, I think Project Exodus is probably gonna be a bit taller than that on the skyline. But just look at already how much that kind of stands out uh, amongst the other rides. It's so, so cool to see. Now, getting back to the stats again, whilst Thorpe have been very, very open about the fact that this is going to be the tallest ride in the UK, up until this point, the speed of the ride has been kept very, very quiet. However, whilst digging through all of these documents, I actually found this interesting line, which states the ride will have a max speed of 130 kilometers an hour. Now that is just over 80 miles an hour, 80.7 to be precise, which means this ride is not only gonna be the tallest ride in the UK, but it's also gonna be one of the fastest rides in the UK, which is just another insane stat that this ride will hold. Now, next up, we have another one of my favorite documents within this application, as for the first time, we get a detailed look at the station building for Project Exodus. And the most exciting thing about this is that there is a train model set up in the station. Now, as you can see, it seems like the trains for this ride will have 10 rows each seating two guests, which means each train will hold 20 riders. And I don't know about you guys, but just looking at these diagrams, these trains do look rather familiar. They do look very much like Mac trains. Mac, of course, being a major roller coaster manufacturer, making some incredible rides around the entire world, such as Icon, uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Helix in Sweden, and Blue Fire over in Germany, as well as uh, many hypercoasters. I actually looked really, really deep at these images. In fact, if we translate the words just above the train in this diagram, uh, the word Fahrtrichtung, that actually translates from German to direction of travel. And of course, Mac being a German company. It's all very, very much pointing towards this being a Mac roller coaster, looking at these diagrams alone. And of course, if this is the case, and to be honest, we can see it straight from these diagrams, this coaster will have lap bars, which is so, so exciting. I've been saying for so many years now that the UK and the roller coaster industry as a whole needs lap bar coasters, like the over shoulder restraints. They're just not as exciting as lap bars are. I've done some amazing rides around the entire world and it's always rides with lap bars that are just so, so much more exciting. They give you so much airtime and so much freedom when riding these roller coasters. So whilst this application gives us a pretty strong indication as to what the manufacturer of this ride could be, as for the theme of the ride, that is still very much a mystery. And that's even more confirmed from this document, which states that the theme of the ride is still being considered. The one thing that Fort Park are confirming about the theme is that the positioning of the ride over the lake will be apparently a main theming feature. So it seems like the ride is very much gonna play into its kind of natural area and take beauty from the fact that it's built around this very picturesque lake. But yeah, this document does straight up just say that the theme of the ride will be considered and developed a lot more if the coaster actually gets approved. Like there's no point in the creatives kind of spending all of his time on the theme when they don't even know if the coaster is gonna get built. So fingers crossed, when this thing gets approved, the theme and everything will then start to roll um, and the design process will really kick into gear. Now in terms of the money that Fort Park are actually gonna be spending on this project, I've got all of that information for you guys as well. In fact, I actually got a super fun fact from this application that Fort Park approximately make 51.1 million pounds every year from guests, which is a bit of a crazy number. Uh, but yeah, it seems like Fort Park are going to be spending 18 million pounds 
on Project Exodus, which is a pretty hefty budget. I believe this is a similar amount of money to what they spent on the Swarm and Smiler. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a decent chunk of money and it's proved that they can make incredible rides with this kind of budget. So yeah, I mean, it seems like a massive number. I don't really know the ins and outs on exactly what that budget is going to be spent on, but... It seems like a lot of money, doesn't it? It is a lot of money. 18 million, that's mental. But yeah, the park are expecting this new project to bring in 185,000 additional visitors. Because interestingly, apparently the visitor numbers to Fort Park has actually been declining ever since 2010 which is obviously a year which not a lot really happened at the park. Saw the ride opened in 2009 and in 2010 we got Saw Alive. I made an entire video about everything that happened in 2010, so feel free to check that out. But uh, I don't know, in my opinion, it wasn't a standout year or anything. But yeah, apparently um, the visitor numbers have been declining ever since this big peak in 2010. And obviously COVID has not helped with that at all. In fact, Project Exodus is kind of a big part of Fort Park's comeback plan from COVID. And as well as this, they list another reason as to why Project Exodus is needed for the park. And that reason is to respond to increasing competition in the leisure industry. Now, just gonna reading between the lines here, to me, it does seem like it's a pretty direct response to the ever looming threat of the London Resort. Obviously a multi-billion pound theme park project that's been kind of bubbling in the background um, around the London area for a good many, many years now. And it's still up in the air as to if a London resort is even gonna get built. But yeah, it does seem like it's kind of worrying Merlin with them investing a lot of money into the Southern parks especially, which I'm not complaining about at all. Now, another really interesting thing that I wasn't expecting to be discussed in this application was the future after Project Exodus. I'm getting excited about Project Exodus, but the park are already looking past it and planning for what's going to happen after that. In fact, they literally say the investment in the renewal and enhancement of rides and attractions is paramount if the resort is to sustain interest and remain competitive in the leisure and tourism market. So it seems like the park are very aware that they need to keep investing if they want to stay relevant and competitive. And as we can see from this map here, they actually state that the orange areas on this map are areas of interest moving forwards with the key one being Island A, which is next to the Swarm. Now this was an island that was first kind of identified and brought to us enthusiasts attention many, many years back when the park submitted their medium term development plan in which this island was selected as an area where a roller coaster up to the height of 40 meters could be built. However, obviously it's never happened. However, Forpa saying that this is gonna be a key area moving forwards in which they very much could look to build a new coaster. And another really interesting thing is that the hotel site has also been uh, highlighted because Fort Park did actually apply for planning permission for a large scale hotel to be built on this site. And I believe it was approved, but obviously it never came to fruition. But that planning permission is still there. So who knows within the next few years, and especially with the addition of Project Exodus, there's going to be more people coming to the park. Fort could very much be looking to build this uh, hotel, finally. Now next up, we have a really nice touch from Fort Park because of course, Old Town was once home to the iconic log flume, Logger's Leap. And there's actually very famous photos of the late Princess Diana riding Logger's Leap with her children. And yeah, this ride has often kind of been associated with Princess Diana. And once Logger's Leap um, unfortunately closed a few years back, they turned one of the old Logger's Leap boats into a bit of a memorial for Princess Diana. And this memorial was located in Old Town, which of course is now in the slap bang middle of the development area for Project Exodus. So a few people were kind of asking what's gonna happen with this Princess Diana Memorial. And as we can see from this official photo from within Fort Park, that memorial has been moved over to the Sunken Gardens, which appears to have a lovely new fence built behind it. So yeah, hopefully we'll be seeing Sunken Gardens open again for the 2022 season with this uh, relocated 
Princess Diana Memorial Boat. Now talking of photos from within the park, another really interesting photo that I found from this application is this very recent photo from within Old Town itself. And as you can see, I've been talking about this a fair amount in my recent construction updates. I've been saying that it seems like work has been going on next to Creek Freak. And as you can see here, the old staircase that would take you over the Logger's Leap trough has now gone and it's been replaced with this dirt road um, or track, which I can presume is some kind of service or construction road for this coaster. So although major construction is yet to start, it seems like work in this area is definitely progressing and they are very much preparing for this ride to be built. Now, in terms of the actual construction calendar, we get some more information within this document, which states that construction will start late 2022 with an estimated 16 month construction program, which obviously takes us nicely into 2024, which I've been saying this whole time is very likely the year that we will see Project Exodus open. And yeah, that brings me onto this final piece of information from this planning application. And this one is quite a funny one, but one of my favorite things actually within this entire um, application, as it seems to be a little bit of a mistake in one of these documents titled the Heritage Impact Assessment. When I say I read everything, I really did read everything to try and scare out these details. Um, the title for this document, rather than being Project Exodus, like it is on all of the other 49 documents, the title on this one is Project high rise so although it doesn't really mean anything to me it seems like this was maybe one of the original code names for project exodus before it was then changed to project exodus and yeah it's just really interesting and i'm sure this will be like a piece of fort park trivia um, that i'll ask at some point in a future quiz or something but yeah it seems like project high rise was one of the original code names for this ride and there we go that is all of the information that i could scour from this massive planning application. If there is anything that I've missed, please let me know down in the comments. And of course, I will update you guys as I film future videos about Project Exodus. Honestly, I am so, so excited for this ride. As a lot of you have been commenting on my tweets and videos and stuff, we've all collectively watched theme park YouTubers cover brand new attractions at their home parks like Towers and Blackpool, um, even Chessington. And we've been waiting as Fort Park fans for 10 years now for a new major roller coaster to get built. And it's finally our turn. It's finally my turn to document this construction and put everything I can into just making this the sickest kind of construction process possible. And I'm so, so excited to start this journey with you all and watch this incredible, what I think will be the UK's best roller coaster get built at my very own home park. I'm so, so excited. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for regular updates on Project Exodus as and when we get them. And yeah, otherwise, my name is Jack Silkstone. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.